Welcome back to part two of functions, one-to-one -one key features of graphs. Right now we're gonna be doing domain and range. Domain and range of a graph is going to be dictated by the X and Y values. There are two ways that you can write them. The first thing I'm gonna do is recognize for this first problem, it goes down to negative three, which means that the lowest value is negative three. The Y values are represented by the range and the x values are represented by the domain. So if the lowest value we have is negative three, that is a y value, that is gonna be a part of the range, but look at the domain. The domain, even though it doesn't look like it keeps going, there are arrows, that means that it's going to the left forever and the right forever, okay? With that in mind, that means that the domain is going to be all real numbers. You could also write this fancy looking R for the real set. You could also write negative infinity to positive infinity. All three of those are ways that you could write it. Um, I don't really have a preference, although it feels like currently textbooks are going to this infinity symbol. What about the range? Well, the range can be represented as Y is going up from the negative three. So it'd be Y is greater than or equal to the negative three. You could also have said, that the range, a different way of writing it, would be including negative three, so you put a bracket around including to positive infinity. So if it can't equal, that's when we use parentheses. If it can equal, that's when you use a bracket. All right, moving on. This next one, we're upgrading a lot. Um, so this next one, we have negative two for x, so it's going to the left from negative two, it's also going to the right from positive two. So focusing on the domain, you could say that x is smaller than negative two and x is greater than positive two. Okay, that's one way to do it. Um, the other way that you could do it is using the function notation, which is the parentheses and bracket, which I think is what I'm gonna aim for in this one. So we're still doing domain it is going from negative infinity, from the left forever, up until negative two. Now I'm using parentheses for both of these because it's a hollow circle, so it can't equal it. And, and it is also going from positive two bracket to positive infinity, to the right. Let's do the range then. Now the range, it is the lowest value is negative three and it's going from the depths of the earth, from negative three for y all the way up into negative, or negative infinity for y all the way up into negative three. So the range is going to be from negative infinity to negative three and it is going to be from positive three all the way up into infinity. Positive three again uses the bracket because it can equal it with that filled in dot. Filled in dots are equal to. All right, here we got a crazy looking graph. It goes up, it goes down, it goes back up. But if you look, it's going to the left forever and to the right forever, and it's going up and down forever. That means that the domain and the range are both all real numbers, which I did the abbreviation for, or you could say negative infinity to positive infinity, or you could use the real set. They're both the same thing. They're all real numbers for both of them. So whatever method your teacher would like, that would be the one that you should probably use. Um, for me, I would have preferred the infinities, I think. Symmetry, determine if something is even, odd, or neither. Now we are not referring to the function, uh, like degree, which is a slightly different thing. We are referring to if the function itself is an even function, an odd function, or a neither function. Even functions will be folded about the y-axis only. For even, folded about the y-axis or reflective and symmetrical about the y-axis only requirement would be that. So see how here, this dot right here will flip over there, this dot right here would flip over there. This would be considered an even function. Odd functions have to have a flip and a flop. They have to be symmetrical about the x and the y-axis, um, which is sometimes confusing. I'm gonna use the example that is odd right here. Let's say that this point is one, three. So you have one, three, negative one, three. This dot right here would be 
positive one, negative three. So when we flip over, we also have to change the sign of the y-axis. So it flipped over here and then flipped over there. So it has to do a flip and a flop for it to be considered an odd function. If it is not symmetrical about the x and the y-axis, then that would be considered a neither. So see how you're, here it, it kind of looks like it's an odd function, but this dot should be way up here if it's considered an odd function, and it's not. It's, it's symmetrical, but it's not symmetrical the right way, so that's why this one's neither. Same thing here. Even a line can be considered an odd function if it goes and flips and flops like it should be. This would be an odd function only if it went through there through the x-axis and through the origin. It does not, so this problem is not odd, not odd, so this would be neither even nor odd. If it is provided to you tabularly, then you have the idea that you could graph it. You could also you know, look and see if it's symmetrical about the y-axis. If it's symmetrical about the y-axis for every x value, if you change the x value, the y value would have to remain the same. So here, we did that for the, for the 2 and the negative 2. We had 3 and 3. So this part right here would be even. This part right here is not even. And if that's the case, then this is a neither function, even though it really looked like it might have been an even function to begin with. Let's look over here. 2 produced negative 2. Negative 2 produce negative 2, so between these two, we have an even function. What about 0 and 6, and negative 3 and negative 4? Well, let's see if, if this, is, this is an interpreted area. We got 0, positive 6, that's up here. We got 2, negative 2, that's down here. We got negative 2, negative 2, that's right there. And then we have negative 3, negative 4. Now, this could be some sort of parabola looking shape. It might not be this dot right here, that negative three, negative four, we are uncertain on the other side. So this might be even, but it cannot be guaranteed, and therefore it degrades down to neither. Okay? Putting it all together, if you have a equation for you, and you need to figure out the domain, the range, continuous, discrete, even, odd, yada, yada, yada. There are, here we have an x squared, here we have a y squared. Other than that, it's the exact same equation. Hopefully, you know that an x squared equation will produce a parabola. If it is shifted up by 2, because we have changed the sign, keep the sign for function uh, shifting, then it would be looking like this. So this graph looks like this. And number two, the only difference is that instead of shifting up because it's an x equals, it's going to be shifted to the right instead. So you guys get a sneak peek at what these two things would look at like. Now we're going to determine if it is a function. Well, this would pass the vertical line test. If it's an x squared, it will pass the function test. But it would not pass the 1 to 1 would be no. Not one to one, all right? Here, this would fail the function, but it would be one to one. Okay? Domain. This problem goes left and right forever, so this problem would be from negative infinity to positive infinity, whereas this problem over here doesn't go left and right forever. It goes up and down forever. See how it goes up and down forever? So this problem, the range would be negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, well, what about the range on number one? The first problem over here, this one is going up forever. Because it's going up forever, it will be going from the two to infinity. Now, it can include the two because it is touching that two line, so I'm going to put a bracket around the two, but it can't equal positive infinity, so that's why I put the parentheses there. It also appears to be continuous and appears to be an even function. See how it's symmetrical about the y-axis? What about here? Domain is the problem that would, we would have here because it is shifted to the right by 2, and it's going to the right from there. So it can include the 2, so we put a bracket around the 2, 
but it's going from there to infinity, so we need the parentheses around the infinity. It might be considered continuous, and it is neither even nor odd, so we gotta put a neither there. Okay, that's gonna do it for this one. Until next time, my friends, I will see y'all later. Bye.